everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at No Time to Explain. Let's on pause here. There is no title screen really for this game, so this is uh, the best that I could do for a lead-in here. But in any case, this is a puzzle platformer. It's been out in various forms for a couple of years. I have a weird history with No Time to Explain. It was actually one of the first games I ever did a formal review request for, uh, back when I started doing formal review requests on the channel in, like, April 2011, so it's been a while. Uh, but it finally found its way onto Steam recently by way of the Greenlight platform. And what this is essentially is uh, an action platformer not unlike something like, say, Super Meat Boy, uh, except instead of, you know, just running up the walls and whatnot, we actually have the gimmick almost like a, of the gun from Cave Story, at least like halfway through that game, uh, where we can kind of use our gun to provide us with some momentum to get around. And this is like our hub world right here, so we can, you know, what, bust open these and uh, get some extra levels. I'm not sure if this is actually the last level in the game. My guess is no, although the fact that we're so close to the end kind of worries me a little bit because I've only been playing for like 45 minutes. Uh, but in any case, let's jump into some levels that are fairly early on here so you can get kind of a feel for what's going on. Um, so we're going to be fighting a shark here. Did I accidentally... Oh no, I put myself exactly on my favorite level. Awesome, okay. So the way that No Time to Explain works is that every single level gives us a, a player and a gun. This is going to be one of the exceptions to the, the rule where we're actually going to have a weird kind of gun. Normally we have that kind of laser gun that you've seen so far. Um, but basically our only goal is to get to the end of the level and occasionally on boss levels actually kill the boss as well. Uh, so it's not quite a puzzle platformer. It's not quite an action platformer like Castlevania or something. Uh, it falls somewhere in the middle. So this gun, we have a, we're like a football player here. We have some kind of... I don't know, shotgun or crossbow-like device based on the crosshair. Uh, and we're just using this to propel, oh, propel ourselves as far as we can over the spikes. The, the other various obstacles that get in our way as well. So, uh, the basic premise of the game, story-wise, is that we're basically just, you know, enjoying ourselves, eating a little food in our living room, playing some video games, probably uh, getting ready to masturbate, and then us from the future busts through the door and says he has no time to explain what's going on, and then a giant enemy crab starts eating him. Uh, so the game is very much high on absurdity, shall we say. Out of, I ran out of time on this level? Are you kidding me? That doesn't seem to make sense. Um, yeah, the game is very much high on absurdity, and it plays to... Oh, come on. Let's try it this way. Uh, it plays to the sentiments of humor a lot. Please tell me that I can get this. Maybe like this? Yeah, that's a better way to do it. Okay, let's try that again. Can we possibly... You can only shoot once per jump. The fact that I'm failing on this level doesn't bode well for the rest of the video. This game does get reasonably hard at times, I should point out. Uh, but yeah, it's been available for like two years on the developer's website, I believe, uh, and it's been on Desura as well. There we go, finally got the trajectory right here. This gun is actually, it's interesting, it has different physics than the uh, other gun that we'll be using primarily, which actually made these levels with the football player like some of the more interesting levels that I've played so far in the game. I hope that the game isn't almost over because again I haven't played too much of it but it doesn't look like there's too much left on the level select screen but maybe there's other worlds that you can uh, visit later so we're gonna jump through here again everything's broken up into those like little circles that you've seen ooh we don't wanna do that everything's broken up into those little like spheres that you've seen uh, and each sphere contains somewhere around you know like five six levels let's try this again that was fairly close it very much has that kind of like same uh, you die a lot but it kind of doesn't matter system as Super Meat Boy normally uh, the checkpoint system is very, very good, and you don't have to restart each level at the beginning. You actually just restart each level uh, from... Am I dead? No. Okay, you actually just restart each level from, uh, you know, the last place you died. Most of the time, although I have encountered some bosses that have made that... Uh, or it would make me sound like a fool right now once you see them. And there are boss battles, as you can see, as we get a little further. Uh, I think our... Yes, our kind of wormhole is down there. So now we've got to do... Some fairly tricky platforming here. Just land in the hole. Also, my advice for intercourse, so just keep going this way. Try to leave the guns at home, though. Doesn't always go over well, so we'll fly through here. Oh, come on. That's pretty good. All right, and we should be getting close to the boss level, but actually, I guess we're not. We're just coming back here. The way the game is organized to me is kind of weird. Like, again, if I just pause it, this is the only menu we have for this whole game. So we have back to the level select, restart this level, screaming guy. You can unlock some hats. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of a weird organization. This game, for all the positive things that I will probably say about this game, there's a lot of negative things as well. Uh, it, it seems short, fairly shallow, the early levels are fairly easy, and the presentation, although the graphics and music are fine, uh, the presentation with respect to, like, the organization of the game, as you can see here, is pretty bad. Story is very shallow, but all that really matters is the gameplay. So is this worth, you know, like, the $5 or, or $7 that they're charging for it right now? I actually hate this level. Why don't we try one of these ones before I, I 
uh, obviously, like, doing this for myself. Uh, we'll start up here in this alien spaceship, I guess. Um, is it worth it? It depends. I, I, I have a feeling that my opinion on this game is not going to be the, the popular opinion on this game. I, am I dead? What happened? Uh, I kind of feel like this is the kind of game that a lot of people who cover indie games, or a lot of YouTubers who cover indie games, are going to be, like, really excited about. And I don't mean that necessarily in a negative way. I simply mean that to say that I don't necessarily share that same sentiment with them, and I, I would not be surprised to find myself uh, being kind of a dissenting opinion. But I guess that kind of makes me sound... Oh, I didn't mean to pause it there. I guess that kind of makes me sound like a hipster when I say it like that. Like, oh, you think it's cool? Actually, it's shallow and pedantic. I don't mean it like that. The gameplay itself is a reasonable degree of fun, it's just not, uh, oh, this fucking level. This level, there's so much trial and error involved in some of these levels, this level was by far the worst for me. So we've got to start, these are jump pads, obviously, if we touch the spikes we die, so what we've got to do is, like, shoot ourselves, wow, that worked really well. We had to shoot ourselves, like, downwards in order to speed, uh, or keep us from hitting those spikes, and then we had to shoot ourselves in the other direction. Uh, in order to keep ourselves afloat from the spikes that were underneath us. So, that was a level that required a lot of uh, trial and error on my first attempt. And there's a very, uh, I say this a lot for a, for, oh my god. I keep clicking outside of the window. Somehow this game won't record with fraps for me. I'm starting to wonder if it's an issue with my fraps, uh, because that's been happening so often lately. Cough, cough, you're a truck simulator. Um, but in any case, that is neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, there's a wildly inconsistent difficulty curve, but I end up saying that with a lot of puzzle platformers, so I'm starting to think that maybe that's just, or action platformers maybe, I'm starting to think that's just perhaps a hallmark of the genre, shall we say, uh, in that it's impossible to balance the difficulty, because everybody is going to, uh, everybody is going to find different levels, uh, difficult for their own reasons. Alright, so we're getting fairly close to the end of our worlds here, and then we'll start playing through some of those new levels, just in case uh, it actually is the end of the game, in which case this would only be like a two hour long experience, which is fairly short. Oh, come on. But the, the level design is okay in its own right. I mean, like, take a look at some of these levels. I mean, obviously I've done these puzzles before, so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but you can get a feel for basically what we have to do here. The first jump, we just gotta get to that, but then this one, we don't quite nearly get high enough to get over, so we gotta shoot ourselves under. Or over, I should say. Then we gotta pull ourselves under. But also, your beam runs out. Like, if I just stand here and fire for a second, you can get a feel for it. Uh, it'll gradually get smaller and smaller. I think. That's the way I've been... That's what I, the impression that I've had as we've been going here. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so you can't just, like, make yourself jump ad infinitum. Otherwise, that would obviously be very, very easy. Ah, almost. This is another one that requires, required some trial and error. So like I said, you know, the level design is okay sometimes. It's never really blown my mind, but it's decent enough for what it does. But I think my number one complaint about this game uh, is that it just doesn't necessarily feel like... This level is a pain in the ass, too. Uh, it just doesn't necessarily feel like it's solid enough to really warrant distribution on Steam. I mean, that's the kind of thing that is not really... Uh, my choice to make. Obviously, that's up to the, the users of Greenlight. Uh, however, come on, just fit through the tiny hole there. The Northern Lion story. Um, well, every hole's tiny when you have a micro penis. Please stop jumping onto the jump pads to start with every single time. Uh, I'm not touching anything. Like, right now, the game has just put itself in an infinite loop. Uh, so I'm guessing. Oh, there, I got lucky that time. Maybe that'll throw us out of uh, Groundhog Day there. Um,. But yes, I, I just don't necessarily feel like the game is good enough, or where it needs to be to be, you know, ready for mass consumption. It's very unpolished, despite uh, the length of time that it's been out. Occasionally you'll see, like, weird gameplay quirks like that, where you get stuck in those, like, infinite loops. And usually it's not game-breaking or anything like that, um, but it is obviously, as you might be able to tell, uh, annoying sometimes. Come on, just fit down through the center, there we go, and then we'll just fling ourselves over this... That didn't work. Um, it is annoying, and that's that's the worst part about it. Also, we're introducing these portals, because if you're making a 2D platformer in this day and age, you got to throw in some portals. Come on. Not that teleporters, or teleporters were invented by Portal in the first place, but I, I'm having a, a kind of trouble articulating my thoughts here. Uh, overall, I think No Time to Explain is a decent game, but it's a game that I have difficulty recommending, even in spite... Oh, we don't want to go that way, I guess. Uh, even in spite of the great game drought of 2013 so far, I don't necessarily think this is something that a lot of people should invest uh, much of their money into, but it's the kind of thing that, you know, it's inoffensive in its own right as well, and I, I don't mean that sometimes inoffensive can be an offensive term itself, it's like uninteresting, but 
Uh, the game's interesting enough in its own right as well. It's just, for whatever reason, it just doesn't feel polished enough for me uh, to really warrant a huge recommendation. So, uh, again, people may feel differently about that. Come on, just get to the portal. People may feel differently about that, and that is totally fine, but uh, when it comes to action platformers, this is not the game for me. This is not the next coming of Meat Boy, for example. And I mean, uh, I don't know, the, the, the real comparison, because Meat Boy is obviously, I don't mean this to sound too offensive, but uh, is out of this game's league to a certain extent. This is an example of a boss fight that we'll have to deal with here. Um, better comparison might be to compare this to the game Crunch that I played on Basura recently. Is this better than Crunch? I don't know, I'd say they're basically on the same level. Um, but whereas Crunch, I kind of gave a, a seemingly positive review to, um, at least a middling review, I kind of, I feel somewhat more negatively, or mixed at least, uh, about No Time to Explain, perhaps just because I've been waiting so long. And this is actually one of the major complaints I have about the game, is that the boss fights, sometimes death just doesn't matter, like, I'm dying constantly on these boss fights, but it isn't really an issue, I can sort of just stand here, uh, and still attack this thing in the middle regardless. Like, the bullets are gonna hit me, I'm gonna get crushed by stuff occasionally, uh, but 90% of the time, dying is not actually going to end the level for me. I'm just going to respawn, which is super weird because sometimes, like 10% of the time, dying will uh, ruin your life and you'll have to restart the entire level, which is unusual. I don't understand what the difference is, and, and it can be frustrating when you die and then it seems like you have no reason to die. And this is going to be the end of this uh, boss fight, I guess, because, yeah, we got our dudes right here. Again, we're introducing ourselves, or we're running into, very often, uh, past versions of ourselves. The story doesn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense. It's a giant enemy crab we fought at the very earliest part of the game. Uh, yeah, the story doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, but it doesn't need to, you know, it's zany enough in its own right. And this is actually one of the levels that actually shows off a little bit of the variety in the game. Um, because we are actually going to be kind of treating it like a 2D shmup here. This is one of the best levels uh, in the game that I've played so far, so we might as well play this one, then we'll move on to perhaps some of the uh, later levels. Uh, that I haven't done yet, so you can see the game does get substantially more difficult. Like, the early levels, uh, I found the difficulty wildly inconsistent, but largely not that bad. Like, I was able to get through, like, all of the levels that you've seen so far, which is probably like 30 or 40 levels, uh, in under an hour. So not many of them took me more than a try or two each. And we're using our gun as a gun here, as opposed to simply, uh, a method for getting around or propelling ourselves further throughout the level. And we'll have a boss at the end of this. Again, I, I appreciate that this game is kind of doing all... Contra 3 on us here. This Triceratops is shooting Pokeballs at us and, you know, giant tracer bullets. Oh, that was kind of close. We're going to destroy it and ruin all of our memories of the Land Before Time. I guess the Triceratops in the Land Before Time was kind of a bitch, so I don't feel too bad about destroying it. But if we had to destroy Ducky, I wouldn't feel good about that. Then we got some, like, Mega Man X style uh, stealth bombers that we've got to dodge here. Hopefully somebody understands what I'm saying when I say that. Uh, I don't think we can shoot those guys down. We're going to deal with some crocodiles here. Lots of dinosaurs involved, lots of giant enemy crabs. Game does a good job of being irreverent and funny, I'll at least give it that. But it's also one of those games that, and this might sound, make me sound snobby again, but it kind of feels like it's trying really hard to be funny, and sometimes that can be uh, annoying as well. Uh, although most of the time it does succeed. At least, you know, it elicits a hearty chuckle out of me regardless. So now we got some bullet hell, and this is a weird part of this game. Uh, as Kay was pointing out, I'm getting hit by these guys consistently, uh, but it's not actually killing me, so I'm not quite sure if this is just for show. Uh, like, I could, if you fly into the dinosaur, he'll kill us and we'll die, as you can see right there, and then we've got to restart. Um, but otherwise, if you just get hit by the bullets, it doesn't really matter, so I'm not sure. That's never clearly explained in the game. It might make perfect sense if you played it for a long time uh, and, you know, internalized those feelings, but uh, for me, it just kind of weirds me out. As long as we just don't get hit by the spinning dinosaur here, uh, we're largely safe. Also, there's like some weird quirks in the game. If you hold down your gun for long enough, you just don't get the gun sound anymore, and that can be weird because it makes it kind of harder to tell if you're hitting an enemy. Just little things like that, as we just destroyed the boss very quickly that time, um, kind of take away from the experience overall for me. Again, it's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. It is just a very weird game, and I don't mean weird in like, oh, what's this? This guy's hanging with pterodactyls. My puny human brain can't handle anything that isn't mundane. Uh, like pterodactyl stealth bomber, I can get down with that, that's okay with me. Uh, but it, it's just, there's parts of this game that just don't necessarily uh, make for the greatest experience in my opinion. Let's just exit to a level select. Been, and again, remember that like that first set of levels we did, there were like three levels and then we were done. Uh, this one we've been going for like 20 minutes. So we're going to go back to the level select here. This is why the part of the reason why the organization of the game doesn't really make that much sense to me. Uh, we'll check out some of the later levels here, so this is new. 
Why don't we check this out? Uh, this has been a subs oh, well, this is where we started, isn't it? Um, this has been a substantially more difficult set of levels. Uh, orders of magnitude more difficult than the levels we've seen before, so don't be surprised if I end up totally effing this up. At least I haven't clicked off the screen in a little while. So again, level one, usually fairly easy. Uh, but now we're going to get introduced to a new mechanic, which is using this fire to destroy that wood. And then we'll fly out of here. And also the water itself uh, is an important mechanic that we will use. Uh, we, it might have been an earlier level where they introduced that. But um, we're going to use the water not only to pull ourselves out, but it also allows us to kind of have it. Oh, really? It also allows us to have like a more dense medium than air to shoot our gun in, which makes us fly uh, a little bit farther when we apply our gun to it. So if we don't touch the fire, or if we don't touch the water soon after touching the fire, we'll die, which is why uh, I'm immediately extinguish extinguishing myself whenever possible. This is a fairly tough level. This is where things start to get uh, kind of beyond my abilities to do consistently on the first couple tries. Anyway, by the way, notice how much faster we propel upwards with the uh, water instead of just the gun itself. So maybe we should try just doing it over the water. I think we've got to do it inside of the water to get the benefit. Uh, but anyway, we probably won't play too many of these levels because the trial and error is just going to be frustrating to watch. You can do it! Land in the water! Oh, he didn't die. Okay, that's a rarity for me. Now just don't hit the spikes because I don't want to do the level over again. If it takes us 20 minutes, it takes us 20 minutes. Doesn't bother me none. Alright, give me a second here. Fly out. Be safe. Stay alert, stay safe. Okay, we'll try that again. Over like... Oh. Over like so. That... Oh! I was on the edge there. Let's try this one more time. And by one more time, I mean as many times as it takes to get it right. You might think I'm just... Ah! Oh, you might think I'm just terrible at this. Oh, I guess we've already gotten the uh, wood destroyed, so it doesn't matter. And of course, now that that pressure is off me, it's very easy to get. Uh, now they're going to introduce these spikes that switch sides. There are new gameplay mechanics introduced, but I normally uh, find myself praising platformers like this for how they introduce those gameplay oh, was bad. For how they introduce those gameplay mechanics incrementally. No Time to Explain is one such game where I actually feel the exact opposite. I feel like the game mechanics are introduced like all at once. I'm just gonna kill myself so oh, I spawned back down here. Uh, I feel like the game mechanics are oftentimes introduced all at once or at the very least in large clumps. Nutty Professor 2 style which uh, I oftentimes think uh, makes the game a little bit more confusing and like there'll be vast swaths of the game where you're just doing something you've already learned 30 times. Uh, like using your gun to get over a gap, for example. Uh, and then there'll be times like this where they introduce, you know, not only the fire thing, but the water mechanic, as well as the um, the spikes that switch directions all at once. So be, that's what I mean when I say that the game feels wildly inconsistent at times. This is a tough one. There we go, managed to make it through there. Uh, and this is where things, this almost feels like we're getting to the challenge levels part of the game. Although it may very well only be you know, the very, the next world, basically. And again, notice that normally when you die, no loading screen. You just load in super quickly uh, at the last checkpoint you died at. Not so in this case. The levels with the fire tend to be a little weirder about it. Like, you tend to uh, have to restart the level from the very beginning, which is actually uh, an unfortunate side effect of that game mechanic, I guess. I mean, I understand it. Otherwise, you could possibly put yourself in a situation where it's unwinnable or something. Um, I, at least I assume that's their reason. Uh, you, they have to reset the entire level to make sure that it's, it's possible to be defeated every single time. Uh, but it kind of makes it more frustrating to play. And by the time, like, I, when I was playing this game yesterday, I, I played for like an hour, hour and a half. Uh, it was probably like 45 minutes in, in my first session. I should be fair. Um, and by the time I got to like that 45 minute mark, I was just like, uh, I just kind of want this to be over. Again, this is a good example of that, because if I die on this section, and it's very easy to die on this section, yep, as you can see, I have to redo the entire level, and it takes a few seconds to load back in. Normally, a few seconds of loading time, not the end of the world, but it's kind of frustrating when you have to repeat a level like 30 or 40 times. So this is what I mean, I think I'm articulating a little bit better my, my problems with this game. But I don't want this to be taken overall as an extremely negative review, because uh, I think it's actually... Fucking hell. I think it's actually okay, it's just not... Uh, you know, on the same level of action platformers that you might be used to if you've played primarily, you know, games like Super Meat Boy, for example, uh, that I recommend consistently on the channel. It's the kind of game where I'd be like, yeah, it's okay, but it kind of feels and looks like a free game. And normally I hate when people say that about indie games, but uh, I believe this was originally based on a free game, by the way. Like, I, I hate when people say that, they're like, oh, there's a free game that's just like this, so why should I buy this one? Well, 
I hate it, but to a certain extent, it is fair. This is a, an interesting level, actually. Oh, well, we've already fucked it up, so why don't we just kill ourselves? Uh, and this will probably be the last one I'll do over the course of this video. So we gotta hit the fire, like so. Then get that, extinguish ourselves. Then we gotta race against time here. And meat boy ourselves over. Oh, I touched the spikes! So overall, yeah, I mean, I'm doing my, like, meta impressions of the game now, because, again, there's no title screen for me to just hang out at. Uh, but I think No Time to Explain is okay, but largely, uh, I, I feel like it's kind of disappointing. So, you know, it's 5 to $10 on Steam. I think I paid, or I didn't pay for it. I got a review copy from the developers, but I think I was about to pay $7 or $6 for it. But I might be thinking of smooth operators. But in any case, is it worth it? Maybe. I don't necessarily think that it's a, a must-buy. Uh, it's the kind of thing that I would definitely uh, suggest perhaps waiting for a sale for or even skipping altogether. But it's not terrible, it's just kind of unpolished and uh, leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But overall, one of the better titles to come out of Greenlight, so there's something you can put on the back of the box. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.